there's been a lot of controversy recently about the potential dangers of the ketogenic diet. But once you understand the foundational metabolic benefits of controlling not only insulin, but other hormones, you're going to want to make sure you're adapting this approach to optimize your health. Because we always look at glucose, we don't catch the disease until they become so insulin resistant that no amount of their own insulin is enough to keep the glucose in check. And now the glucose starts to climb, 10 years later perhaps, and that's when we detect the problem. We're looking at the wrong marker. While the human body doesn't get any energetic benefit from the fiber, the bacteria do. The bacteria are able to uh, use the fiber as fuel. And the product of that, one of the products, is short-chain fatty acids, like something like butyrate. And what's interesting is that as the fiber is being digested by the bacteria to create butyrate, the short-chain fat, that short-chain fat can get absorbed into the body. regards to protein, which is without a doubt relevant to someone who's exercising endurance or resistance exercise, you need to make sure you get enough protein. It appears to be that there's no magic window with that, that basically if, if someone's eating protein, they don't have to get it 45 minutes after their workout or an hour after the workout, that essentially if within a 24 hour window, if they've eaten sufficient protein, then, they, then they're okay. simply give your body a break from eating. And I agree with the 12 hour, 12 hours should be what everyone does every night of the week. Mm -hmm. Even if they're eating three full meals or whatever, at least get that 12 hour break.